Hello everyone, welcome back to a, another Stride webinar. Today we are going to do a follow-up video to the previous lactate threshold training video we did uh, a few weeks ago, almost two months ago now. We did a standardized lactate threshold protocol in the Stride office and I went through the initial test results and some training intentions that we had for the six weeks to follow before we retested. Uh, that test happened about two weeks ago now, and I'm gonna walk through the training that occurred in that time span and then go over a comparison between the two tests to see any sort of improvements and highlight any sort of differences in the testing data. Just as a uh, topic list, we're gonna go through a quick workout recap and then do the test comparison. The initial training intention, intentions were to do two dedicated workouts per week over the course of about six weeks. We had five weeks of workouts um, coming off the tail end of that first test. The idea was that we were gonna do one workout that targeted right around that lactate threshold power, which was for me about 318 watts from the last video, the last test result. And we were gonna do one specific session running right at that uh, threshold that we deemed at 318 watts. And then we were gonna do a, another workout with a little bit more volume in it per week at a little bit lower intensity, but slightly lower intensity. Um, that was somewhere between about 307 to 314 watts. So a sub LT and then a little bit dedicated at LT and a little bit above that LT. So week one, we had three times 15 minutes. And this was one of the example uh, workouts where we did a below LT. The uh, training situation I should probably highlight too, all of these training sessions were done on the exact same treadmill that we tested on in the stride office for that initial test. And it was using the same stride and we used the stride mobile app with a brand new uh, indoor mode uh, or the treadmill mode to run the workouts directly there. I loved the experience. It was so great to be able to hit those targets. Uh, some of these targets mixed in inclines, some we kept uh, flat, but the overall goal was to make sure that we were hitting that specificity that we deemed at the beginning of the block. So the first workout, three times 15 minutes, had some slight alternations in incline, but running right at that sub LT power. The second workout for that week was a workout called CP LT alternations. And the goal of this was to run a two minute repeat uh, or two minute section right at critical power and then go right at LT for another three minutes. It ended up being five of those repeats total, mixing in a little bit of the incline, mixing in a little bit of the flat there. Um, I felt pretty confident at the beginning of this first week that things were right in line based off the uh, testing data, and I felt like my critical power was also right in line. Workout recap for week two. The first workout of the week was supposed to be 12 times three minutes. I managed to get through seven, uh, and these just did not feel great. This was supposed to be uh, right at the LT, and it just did not feel fantastic. I ended up running a little bit lower than that, um, and I was only able to get seven of them in instead of doing another five for 12 times three minutes. Uh, I didn't really sweat that necessarily because when I came back later in the week, I did three times 10 minutes. You should note that the graph here looks a little different because uh, part of my power duration curve fell out a little bit, but I still use those specific power targets from before. So I hit three times 10 minutes right on and I actually felt super comfortable at this. So um, maybe a little bit of cumulative fatigue at the beginning of the week with a little bit short uh, recovery for the three times or that the three minutes on one minute off for that three minute se session that I didn't really hit that well. But the three times 10 minute session later in the week, I felt fantastic. Um, I felt really, really good. Things felt very, very dialed in there. So good training week, week two, despite the beginning of the week not going great. Um, week three started off with a workout called Who Put This Hill Here? And this ended up uh, going along with our stride workout of the week series. The main idea here was to run right at uh, your LT, do a little bump up, 
just around your critical power and then settle right back down to that LT. I thought this workout went pretty well. Um, I was pretty happy with it. The hill section, we were running at about 5% incline, which is more than we were going to do um, during any of the standardized testing, obviously, but I thought it was a good uh, stress on my system without having to run too, too fast. I felt very confident in this workout as well. Got a decent bit of elevation gain. The next workout in the week was a three times 10 minute wave tempo. And the structure of the wave tempo was running uh, two and a half minutes just above LT and then running two and a half minutes just below, alternating that twice in a block to hit 10 minutes total. We played around with the incline a little bit here. The first set was at a little bit higher incline, second set a little bit lower incline, and then last set 0% um, incline. So the way that I liked to work into things was to start a little bit slower, hit the same power targets by increasing that incline. Then as I got into the, se the session, um, lower that incline a little bit and raise the speed. So that was the typical strategy. Uh, week three went pretty well, still focusing right on that LT power and then alternating above and slightly below. Week four was three, the schedule was three times 20 minutes. I managed to do two times 20 minutes and one times 15 minute. Um, the first set, again, had a mixture of inclines. The second set had a little bit less incline. The third set was pretty flat. And I felt by the end a little bit of fatigue by the nature of having to run a little bit faster. And so I feel like I could have done the full three times 20 minute uh, session and gotten in a full hour of volume right at that LT sub LT range. But by the 15 minute mark in the third set, I just felt like the 0% incline was a little bit too um, fast for what I was used to. The next workout in that week was eight times five minutes by nature of, uh, or seven times five minutes by nature of increasing the incline slightly um, as you go up and increasing the intensity in the middle and then coming back down. Um, I thought, it was a really, really good 35 minutes of volume right at that LT power. This was all exactly right at that range. And I felt good enough at the end to ramp up the speed a tiny, tiny bit. Week four went pretty well. I felt very comfortable um, doing the five-minute repeats in the same way that I had the same comfort level doing uh you know, that sort of duration for maybe three minutes, the week or two prior, I felt like I could extend it out to five minutes, no problem. And the 20 minutes, I actually felt really, really confident it's extending out that whole duration. And that was at that sub LT power range. Week five was a 15 minute wave tempo. I don't have the data here because I uploaded to another account and don't have it in this account. Um, but the idea here was to do a sub LT alternating again that two and a half minutes above, two and a half minutes below, but extending it out for three times 15 minutes to get 45 minutes of total volume. And then the last sort of taper workout was a 10 times three minute right at that LT. I felt Great for this. Um, mixed up the incline a little bit in the middle. And by the end, I was running pretty darn quick. Um, so I felt very, very confident at the end of these five weeks of training, two dedicated sessions a week targeting the exact intensity based on the testing we did uh, in the first webinar, first video. So let's jump now into the testing protocol. We use the Stride Lab treadmill. We ran at a 1% incline for both of these tests. We increased the speed by um, 0.3 miles an hour each stage. So we followed the same exact speed on the treadmill. We took a uh, blood sample collection in between stages. My coworker Val helped out and we also had my coworker Kaylee there um, for the second test. Uh, we used the Nova Biomedical Lactate Plus meter to take the samples with uh, fresh strips that we ordered. Um, and the protocol we followed was three and a half minute stages, again at 1% incline. And we went until we hit uh, 4.0 millimolars for the blood lactate value. And then we went one stage past that because we wanted to do a comparison uh, for the testing protocol over the course of six weeks. So this is just, uh, I'll start, I'm not going to bury the lead necessarily here and save it for the very end. Uh, the blue line is the first test. The red line is the second test here. 
Um, we can see that we had a little spike in the middle at stage five for the second test, and then everything came back down. Um, but all in all, the blood lactate values for the same exact uh, protocol were lower um, on average. And I actually was able to extend a, another stage past uh, what I was able to do previously. And the blood lactate value at the end of that was still below uh, the previous testing result. The conditions were all the same. Uh, the room temperature was the same. The fan we used was the same. The hydration strategy was all the same. I tried to keep my uh, diet the mornings of both tests the exact same as well. So I was very confident that the variables that we were comparing um, were, were very, very accurate between tests. But let's look at a dedicated stage-by-stage -stage breakdown. Now, this is going to be the stage-by-stage -stage data of our lactate threshold tests. Um, stage one, we had what I'd consider pretty normal. Usually getting into stage four and five, we see those blood lactate values maybe creeping a little bit above the mid uh, two range. The power was within one watt, pace per mile within three seconds. Cadence was the exact same. Uh, interestingly enough, I'm going to touch on this a little bit um, as we go on because one of the trends I pulled out was that my leg spring stiffness was a little lower for the second test. I wore the same exact shoes, the Nike Alpha Fly, and the only wear in between um, the two tests, I ran a, a four mile um, kind of like tempo effort in them. And that was the only type of wear. So the shoes weren't really, really worn out. Um, but the, the LSS was a little bit lower, the ground contact time was higher, and the vertical oscillation was higher on average. My cadence was a lot lower too. So we'll see that as one of the trends that comes out um, from the two different test comparisons. So stage one, um, followed the same warm-up protocol too, where we did a slow, gentle ramp, not going above threshold, uh, took a little bit of recovery, and then we got into the uh, test. So initially we had I'd consider pretty much the same values uh, for stage one and, and stage two. It really uh, starts to even out as you get a little bit more um, into the running, but the power uh, about the exact same, almost the exact same 0.3% um, different uh, pace per mile, very, very close cadence, all the other biomechanical stuff, pretty darn close for the beginning. Stage two, uh, again, we're running three and a half minute stages, increasing the speed 0.3 miles an hour each stage. Uh, power again within two watts. Blood lactate value is the exact same. So uh, body starting to regulate. And for the uh, you know first stage, we came down a little bit. Second stage, we came up a little bit, met in the middle. Um, cadence increased just barely. LSS was still a little lower. Ground contact time a little higher. Vertical oscillation a little bit higher here. All the cadence stuff was self-selected. I imagine we probably could regulate that a little bit, but that was not something I wanted to enforce in um, this test. We wanted to use self-selected cadence. So we can see things progressing pretty normally, what we'd imagine pretty normally. Um, stage three, we have a slight increase from the first test and a very slight increase in the second test. The power the exact same, pace almost the exact same, cadence still a little lower, LSS a little lower, ground contact time a little higher vertical oscillation, I would say a significant degree higher too. So um, this is kind of an interesting thing that I'll touch on towards the end about maybe what we can uh, practice for treadmill running technique in the future. I wasn't trying to monitor, um, you know, again, cadence, my stride length, um, my ground contact time, vertical oscillation. Uh, but I think it's interesting reviewing the data, just looking at that self-selected um, stuff. Stage four, uh, we get a little bit of a uh, drop in blood lactate values. The power, the exact same, pace, exact same again. Um, to me, this uh, is just pretty, pretty normal. We see the same trend from stage or from test one. And so it's actually uh, kind of reassuring to see that my body was behaving the exact same way. Uh, maybe a tiny bit of buffering, but this is really just getting into it for stage starting to get warmed up, have about, uh, you know, 12, 15 minutes of total volume of running, uh, maybe starting to clear a little bit of blood lactate, but it's really not that high of an intensity yet yeah, starting to get maybe a little bit towards that moderate zone, uh, but it's really not taxing um, at all. Stage five, uh, this was interesting to me that the power is the exact same pace almost the exact same biomechanical stuff uh, or the advanced metrics uh, pretty in line with the progression we'd seen already. I consciously felt, and I remember telling Kaylee and Val uh, who were there during the test as well, 
um, that I started just feeling like a, a little warm, um, sort of feeling a little uncomfortable during this stage halfway through. And my value uh, for the blood lactate shot way, way up 3.7. I was honestly kind of worried that um, I was going to go over my threshold already, which would have been super confusing to me because um, it just felt very uncomfortable all of a sudden. Uh, that only lasted for about a minute in that stage. And with about 30 seconds left to go, I started feeling fine. I'm not sure if this was slight overheating, a little bit lack of hydration. Um, but to me, this was worrying in the moment. And I wanted to make sure that we uh, still, you know, test had the full uh, test range and full stages we went to to get full eight stages in. Um, so you'll see in this next one that it came all the way back down and almost hit the exact same value as before. So I'm not sure if this was maybe a little of uh, contamination for the the sampling. Maybe there was a little bit of sweat, um, a little bit of alcohol that hadn't dried fully from the alcohol swabs um, that we used to, to to control in the samples. I, but to me, it was reassuring and I gave a, a literal sigh of relief when I saw this next sample that, yeah, we were right in line with what we did before. Um, power, again, the exact same pace within a second per mile. Cadence still pretty low. Uh, all the advanced metrics trending the exact, exact same way. Now we're starting to get into the interesting part where these uh, test results start to diverge a little bit. Um, test one we went up to 3.9. So that was getting right on that threshold. And that's where we deemed uh, the threshold training previously was going to be 318 watts. Uh, for this test, we hit 315 watts for the average there. And the blood lactate value was a significant degree lower. This would be what I'd probably refer to as just above the uh, moderate zone in some of the recent running literature uh, from different blog posts, people advocating for uh, lactate threshold-based training model. Uh, there is a pretty standard recommendation to do the longer efforts between two to three millimolars, typically as a sort of round number. Um, and I feel like this is just above that. So this is just above where I was doing a lot of that extended running, that extended duration workout. So if I was doing, um, you know, the 15 minute wave tempo or three times 20 minutes, uh, or doing those longer, a little bit less intense repeats, that was what the intensity was. And so um, advanced metrics look about the exact same again. Uh, but it was good to me to see that we didn't immediately shoot right up um, to four millimolars again. Uh, for the next slide, uh, we stage eight, uh, this is where we cut off the previous stage or the, the previous test right at stage eight. Um, power was almost the exact same, pace almost the exact same, advanced metrics following the same sort of trend again. Um, but the blood lactate value, it, it, it went above four. And so we decided to do another stage after that, but it really didn't inflect at the same degree that we had at the previous Test. So the previous test, we went from 3.9 up to 6.7. So that's where we cut it. But this one, I, I still felt great um, running just above 320 watts. Um, and it still felt super comfortable to me. And so I wanted to go at least one more stage. And, and so I did. Um, but it was interesting to me to see that this was, uh, you know, a lot lower than we did previously. So we'll talk a little bit more um, on, on, the next on the next stage here, the next slide here. Um, stage nine, we increased up to 330 watts, which is my stride auto-calculated critical power. Uh, the, the cadence and the other advanced metrics went in about the same trend uh, that I would have expected before. But the reassuring thing to me here is that the blood lactate value uh, only jumped to 5.8 after we did another three and a half minutes of running at critical power, which is obviously above my threshold. Um, but we still did not load the same amount that we did on the previous test just six weeks before. And so I was very, very happy to see that. I thought about doing one more stage. And in hindsight, we probably should have just to, just to have you know been able to see that progression um, of the blood lactate values. But to me, this was super, super reassuring uh, at the point and say that the dedicated LT work that we did over the previous five weeks, uh, running at LT and sub LT and just stacking on the volume there, uh, it enabled me to run at specific intensities in the same exact training setup. So again, using the same treadmill um, for all the sessions and for the first and second tests. But in this blood lactate 
data result tied with uh, the the power uh, training, I was able to run at the same intensity in another test and have an overall lower amount of lactate, blood lactate in my blood uh, compared to just six weeks prior. And this was super motivating to me uh, during the test to see that I not only felt more comfortable, I felt um, very fluid at these higher intensities, but it was good for me to point and say that I identified a threshold through a testing method um, and I was able to train to that specifically for, uh, you know, five weeks without any sort of training hiccups. Um, aside from, I guess that one three minute session was the only one that really didn't go well. Everything else went great, but then I was able to, over the course of six weeks, just point to a, another sort of physiological data sampling, uh, via the blood lactate meter and have a lower result repeating the same exact test. And it felt a lot easier. So I was very, very happy to have that power-based training program over the course of five weeks and then be able to retest. And it's super motivating for me going forward with my running training that I can kind of point to these numbers, but then also have an expectation um, if I do want to do any sort of these tests and training blocks that I can be confident in the, the data and the, and the training going forward after that too. So that wraps it up for this video, the analysis of a lactate threshold training block. We hope you enjoyed this mini series, this first test uh, training over the course of five weeks, then retesting again six weeks later. I enjoyed it because I feel like I got a lot more fit, um, specifically running on the treadmill in the middle of, uh, or I guess the end of winter here in Colorado. Um, if you have any thoughts, questions, or comments, please feel free to put them in the comments down below on this YouTube video. We'll be back with another coaching-themed webinar next month, highlighting some training and racing data uh, over the course of half marathon. But that wraps it up for this video, and we will see you again in another one. Bye-bye.